What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is buffed necromancer class? Now before we get into that, I'd just like to go over a couple of things really quickly. First of all, if you guys could leave any suggestions for future how good is videos in the comment section down below, that'd be great. I uh, keep in mind that my how good is videos encompass how to get the class, what enhancements to use, what weapon range to use, how to use the class, and of course my own opinion on the classes for its, its main purpose. So if you've got any suggestions that you want to see, then leave that in the comment section down below. And if you see a suggestion you'd like, then give it a thumbs up and that lets me know what suggestions are the most requested from the community. Also, I have my guild, of course, in AQW that I recently kind of revamped and uh, I'm really trying to keep it active. And so I have kicked out about 20 members recently. Um, and so there are about 20 slots free for you guys to come join um, my guild in AQW. So if you guys are interested in joining my guild, then send me a message on Twitter or Discord. Both of those links are in the description down below. If you're going to do it on Discord, then make sure you join my server. Find me on the right hand side. Right click my name. Click... Uh, I think it's personal message or yeah message and then send me a message asking me to join the guild with your username and uh, I'll get back to you and I'll, uh, I'll message you regarding meeting up in AQW so I can invite you. So to get Necromancer you're going to need to merge three things. You need the NUE Necronomicon, you need the Creature Shard and you need 50k gold. Now the NUE no Necronomicon is uh, probably the hardest part. That is purchased from Lightguard Keep for like 999 gold, I think, and uh, it, you require rank 10 Doomwood to purchase this. So uh, that's that's the hardest part. You also need to kill a monster called Creature Creation, and that's at slash join M A U L Mall, and uh, that will drop the Creature Shard, um, which is also required to merge the class, of course. And uh, then, once you've got all the merge requirements, you go to slash join Necro Tower, and uh, you can progress through the map till you get to the mini game there's a like a, an elevator mini game you have to complete and once you completed the mini game you get to the top and you can merge the class there now as for enhancements and weapon range on this class i found through some testing that um, out of luck and wizard which seem to be the obvious choice the best dps came from uh came from full luck now that's not necessarily good though because full luck while better dps um, it wasn't much better than one of the other options I chose and it really gave inconsistent results in terms of uh, in terms of you know sometimes it gave really quick speeds and sometimes it was really low speeds um, and so as a result I I personally think that two luck two wizard is the best way to go so you sort of split it up a bit wizard seems to give better mana regeneration and better health regeneration um, and uh, luck seems to just be better DPS overall. Now keep in mind this class has a, a full magic build like every ability is magic magic based but uh yeah no it does seem to be two luck two wizard is the best balance between uh reliability speed and survivability so uh, that's what i went with and of course you can see a graph on screen that compares the dps numbers with those three enhancement options um hybrid by the way i did test out a little bit and it just there was just flat out worse dps um and i, I mean I, that was immediately obvious to me so i didn't bother doing a uh, full in-depth testing but hybrid was definitely worse now in terms of weapon range this is where it gets a bit interesting um, my three weapon ranges that I chose were Stable, Mid-Stable, and Unstable. And keep in mind the weapons I used for Stable was Nation of Z Blade, which has 144 to 176 weapon range. The uh, LED Dragon Blade, which is the uh, Mid-Stable weapon. Now that was 80 to 240. And then my Unstable weapon, which was um, the Ungodly Grievous of Nolgath, which is 1 to 319. So, uh, you know, I got something... Something that's stable, like every other weapon in the game, then something a bit different, like a bit more unstable, and then finally something that's really unstable. And out of those three weapons, the best DPS actually came from the mid-stable weapons, so the LED Dragon Blade. Now, keep in mind that stable weapons, so the Nation of Z-Blade, was, uh, was pretty similar. It was only like 80 different difference, I think, so it really wasn't that much of a big deal, so just use either stable or mid-stable, but... My advice is don't go unstable, as you can see on screen with the graph. Unstable weapons are clearly worse than uh, than both of the other two options, so uh, keep that in mind. So now onto the passives and abilities. So for your passives, you have two rank four passives and one rank ten. So your two rank four passives are an increase in damage by fifteen percent, and your haste is increased by fifteen percent. And then your rank ten passive is a reduction in spell damage taken by thirty percent. Um, your abilities, you have. Your auto attack, number one, summon minion, number two, weaken, number three, infect, number four, and command undead, number five. Your auto attack is just basic, consumes zero mana, two second cooldown, and it doesn't do anything special. Your next ability, number two, is called summon a minion. 
and this consumes 45 mana, it has a 16 second cooldown. Now, this class is a battle pit class, which means that it, it is uh, one of the three battle pit classes in the game. There are, there's Hawk Evader, there's Necromancer, and there's Beastmaster. So it's, it's a rare breed. You could also argue that Mystical Dark Cast is a ba battle pit class, but not really. Um, but either way, this ability summons your battle pit. So to use the full, I guess, extent of this class, you have to have a battle pit or summon this battle pit. So what that means is, um, basically, if you've got a pet equipped that's not a battle pet, unequip it when using this class, um, and then use an, either another battle pet that you have, so a, a battle pet that you've equipped, or before you start the fight, make sure you use Summon Minion, this ability here. Um, if you don't use Summon Minion before the fight starts, then the battle pet will not be summoned, and you'll be fighting the monster without a battle pit, which means you'll be doing less damage and certain abilities won't work the way they should. So, um, with, that, with that all in mind, um, this ability, Summon Minion, also does some other things. So, for, for one, the haste buff I mentioned earlier in the passives, that actually is larger than it, it's described as. It's described as a 20% haste buff, but it's really, I think, higher than that. Summon Minion is, is described as having a 16 second cooldown in the tooltip. However, in reality, I timed it as being about 10 seconds. So the haste buff is actually really large. Now, Summon Minion also, um, you also get a 150% damage buff and you put a DOT on yourself, which is about 200. And both of those last 18 seconds. So this ability has a 10 second cooldown and the, and the effects of it last 18 seconds. So you can actually loop it really, really easily. And uh, I'd recommend when fighting to have this ability active at all times. Keep in mind the effect is called Deadly Frenzy. Now, your next ability is called Weaken. It consumes 20 mana and has a 5 second cooldown. And, and again, in reality the cooldown is about 3 seconds, so it's a bit shorter than that. So it's quite spammy. Um, now this ability does actually a pretty large amount of damage and uh, and it will heal you for some of the damage dealt. Well, it's, called a, it's, it's described as a, a life leech. So essentially you're uh, doing damage and taking um, the, the health and putting it onto yourself. Now, in reality, this works out as a pretty big amount of damage, but the heal that you get varies greatly. Um, and there's no real observable pattern to the to the variation. I think it's just random variation with the amount, of, amount it heals you. And it heals between 300 to 1500. You know, I, I observed those sort of numbers when healing. So it really, on average, seemed to be about 700, but sometimes you got a dud and it was like 200. So it was really unpredictable. Um, but yeah, your next ability is called Infect. And uh, it consumes zero mana and has a three second cooldown. And what this ability does is it deals damage to yourself. And then you also uh, gain 20 mana back each time you use this. Um, and it, it's slight variation in the amount of mana you gain back. You know, sometimes it's 19, 20 or 21 or whatever. So it, it does vary slightly, but it, it's not really that much of a big deal. Um, and like I said, it, it, this ability does deal damage to yourself. So watch out how much you use this ability. Um, but you are probably going to need to use this ability when fighting because of how much mana the other abilities consume. Your next ability is called Command Undead, and this is ability number 5. It consumes 20 mana, has a 6 second cooldown, and uh, this essentially is just your nuke. It deals a large amount of damage um, from your battle pit, so if you don't have a battle pit equipped, then it won't deal any damage at all. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, this is just essentially just a big chunk of damage that you can deal. Now as for actually how to use the, these abilities, um, my recommendation, my combo that I recommend to you guys, is you start the fight with two, making sure that of course you have either your battle pit already summoned, or you have uh, a battle pit equipped, and then continue the fight with five, four, three, so your nuke, your mana regen, and then your health regen, until your health becomes a problem, because it, it gener generally does because of how unpredictable the heal is and how much damage you deal to yourself, and then when, once your health does become an issue, then start to use your heal more frequently, so start to use three more frequently. So it might look like something like this, it might be, you know, two, five, four, three, five, four, three, five, four, three, oh shit, my health's getting low, three, 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 my health's better now. And then by that point, you probably need to uh, restart your two again. So two, five, four, three, five, four, three, five, four, three, and so on. Essentially, just keep an eye on your health. Keep an eye on um, whether Deadly Frenzy is, is active or not. And just spam five, four, three. That's pretty much it. Like I said, heavy, heavy variation in the amount of healing you get done with ability number um, three. And so just keep that in mind as you go on. Um, and of course remember to summon your battle pet before the fight starts and uh, so you can you can be like I'm not actually in fight in the fight yet I use ability number two 
bang, we've got the Battle Pit equipped, Deadly Frenzy's active, jump straight in, 543, 543, 543. And uh, that's pretty much how to use the class, guys. So what do I think of this class? You know, how good is it at, at its main purpose, which is soloing? Um, look, here's the thing. Necromancer was pretty damn awful before. It used to be, you know, back in the day, one of the best soloing classes, and actually one of the first soloing classes. I think it was the first soloing class. The first class where you could, you know, deal enough damage and uh, heal yourself enough to sort of sustain yourself to actually kill a boss by yourself, which was a, a really cool thing at the time. Of course, now we've got the, the best Solomon classes in the game, like Void High Lord and Lightcaster and Shadowstalker of Time and stuff. So those classes are incredibly, incredibly different and uh, unique in their own ways, I guess. Necromancer, it's very boring. Look, really, like I, descri I just said before, 2, 543, 543, 543, 543. It, there's nothing really interesting that ever happens, you know, I, but I still think this is better than some classes. I think some classes are just so powerful and so easy to use that it's like, where do I actually have to even, you know, think? At least with Necromancer, you have to sort of maybe keep an eye on your health, keep an eye on whether certain things are active, and you can really, you know, fine-tune your usability of this class to a quite quite easily, actually, which, and so to some, to some respect, you know, it's easy to use and it's quite basic, but also, you know, because of that, you can, you can really fine-tune the way you use it. So there's, there's two sides to that, I guess. Uh, but overall, I personally believe that this class is quite boring, um, but it's also quite easy to get. Um, and in terms of just its ability to solo, just if, uh, my own opinions aside, is it a very good soloing class? Yeah, it's it's pretty decent. It's it's not not the best, definitely not the best, but it's uh, not really that awful either. It's like uh, like you guys saw on the DPS numbers. The I mean, you know, the DPS numbers weren't that bad um, compared to other classes, but they weren't they weren't great. Um, but yeah, back to my own opinion on whether this class is, is good or not. I mean, I'm always going to think classes that do something unique and interesting are the ones that are the best. Look, the fact that you're using a battle pit here, which some people might say is a really unique aspect of this class, really doesn't make much of a difference. Like, all, all that that really means is you need to make sure you've got a battle pit. That's all that, all, that's all that really matters um, in terms of that being a, an effect on the gameplay. The core gameplay loop of this class is really boring. And so as a result, I mean, if you're looking for a class that's that's really unique and interesting and you want something new to try and use, this is not the class for you. But if you're you're looking for a pretty easy class to get that can solo stuff well, or you've already got Necromancer and you didn't know it was buffed, here you go. It's way better than it was before, and it's, it's, it's a half-decent soloing class, and it's pretty good for how easy it is to get. That's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and remember... In the description down below, you can join my guild by talking to me on Discord or on Twitter. And of course, leave suggestions in the comment section down below for any How Good Is videos you'd like to see in the future. 